Star Editor works with writers, works with scripts, uh, writes scripts, um, does a lot of, um, it's not so much involved with the production of the series, although I was always watching dailies and going down on the set because I wanted to be involved. But generally speaking, it's working with writers and working with the scripts and writing your own scripts. What is love? Love is the most important thing on earth. One of Margaret Armand's scripts, for instance, I forget which one it was, uh, it just needed notes and we sat down in my office and t talked about what needed to be changed and she went off and home and wrote it. Something that was m more uh, work intensive was something like Who Mourns for Adonais, which really needed a lot of line rewrites, scenes shifted around, and I sat down with Gene Kuhn, we worked out what had to be done, and then I sat down with the director, Mark Daniels, and he had his notes, and then I sat down and made the revisions. So sometimes it's just light work, as with Margaret, and other times it's heavier work, as with the other script. We couldn't escape from each other even if we wanted to. That's how you do it, Lieutenant. By remembering who and what you are, a bit of flesh and blood, a float in a universe without end. And the only thing that's truly yours is the rest of humanity. That's where our duty lies. Do you understand me? Yes. We really needed to work out Adonais. He was something of an empty character, and we needed to give him more character, more interaction with our regular leads. And also, there were some production problems that had to be handled. I forget exactly what they were right now, but I remember that we were working on a very tight set. Uh, it was one big set. And we had to work around that set and, and make it interesting, move around it, uh, give us more aspects of it. Uh, and it was a brilliant set. It was, it was just beautiful. We had to, in some ways, get off the set with the script so that uh, we could show more aspects, move the characters around, give it different looks in just that one set. I see no logic in preferring Stan over me. You have become much known among our people, Spock. Almost a legend. And as the years went by, I came to know that I did not want to be the consort of a legend. The Vulcans were, at the time, as mysterious as the Romulans. We didn't know that much about them because they hadn't been that developed. So as we went along, we made discoveries about the Vulcans. In fact, I just got a letter from someone in France who practically wants me to write a thesis on the Vulcans. And he's, you know, we were just making this up at the time. <laughs> but uh, we did try to, to develop a culture as we went along and keep it consistent so that every time we referenced back, we were correct in our references. So we tried to keep it consistent. And then we tried to develop it as a, a little bit Japanese, a little bit Asian, a little bit uh, Middle Eastern uh, in, in its way. And it evolved as we went along. It wasn't that somebody sat down and said, all right, this is what the Vulcans are all about. We made it up as we needed it, but we tried to keep it consistent at all times. You think you are unconquerable and your ship impregnable. But while we've talked, the capture has already begun. Mostly I liked uh, working with Gene Kuhn, which was a very nice communal kind of relationship we had because we both had the same sort of sense of humor. But working with Gene Roddenberry was extraordinary because he would always come up with something different. I remember a problem we had on um, By Any Other Name, and Gene Kuhn and I both kicked around, how the heck do we have essentially six to eight aliens take over a starship of 400? What can we do? And we tried everything. We could not come up with an answer. So the two of us went into Gene Roddenberry and explained the problem. And he had on his desk this rather uh, odd little paperweight that I had given him. I'd brought it back from Mexico on a trip that I had taken. And it had this uh, uh, dodecahedron shape. And he started sort of nudging it around his desk with his finger. And he said, well, suppose the aliens had this machine that turned our crew into shapes like this. And it was the essence of who they were, but it kind of got them out of the way. And we said, great, problem solved, and went out you know, singing and laughing, and, and uh, the problem was solved. That's all we had to do. And we could also dispense with the rest of the cast for you know, great parts of that particular episode. <laughs> Thank you.
at the end of the first season, in between breaks when we were preparing for the second season, I went to, around to all the actors and said, tell me about your character. You've lived in this skin for a year now. Tell me more, what you know about this character. And then I put it into the Bible as an expanded edition of the format so that other writers would know what has come out of it. Uh, so one of the more interesting things was I was speaking to DeForest Kelly about his character of Leonard McCoy, and I said, what would you think if Dr. McCoy had a son? And, you know, there was a, a problem between them that they wanted to go different ways in their careers, and, and he said, well, I think it should be a daughter. Now, D. Kelly didn't have any children at all, so I was thinking to myself, hmm, I wonder if he ever wanted a daughter. You know, and just that didn't happen. So I said, all right, we'll see what we can do. And it's in the Bible. Joanna McCoy was in the Bible. She never appeared as a character unless she appeared in some of the novels later. Uh, but um, that was a story I always wanted to write and I didn't get to do it. Coin a phrase, fascinating. DC Fontana in itself is a partly a pseudonym because I wasn't revealing that I was a woman. Um, that the first six episodes of anything that I ever wrote, which all happened to be westerns, action adventure, were written under my full name, Dorothy C. Fontana. Uh, but then I ran into the thing of, well, women, women don't write action adventure. Yes, they do. I just wrote six of them. What's your problem? Uh, but I wasn't able to uh, submit material under my full name, so I s started hiding out behind my initials. And so that became a bit of a pseudonym. Um, and as long as the story was good, people were buying it. So, you know, I didn't have a problem with that either. Um, but using um, Michael Richards, which was the pseudonym at the time, which are my two brothers' names, Michael and Richard, um, it was uh, an indication of uh, a script I didn't particularly care for what had been done to it, so I took my name off it.